Hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of Kerbal Space Program Modded Playthrough and today we are on a double rescue mission. So, first things first, probably need to build a ship. So this is one and a half hours of filming, condensed down into less than 45 minutes of video. Into the BAB. Yeah, we're going to need life support for this mission, and we're going to use them life support cans that we were on about in the last episode to house our rescued. Kerbals, but also to give us oxygen. We're gonna need an adapter for that. <coughs> That's the second one, so that should be enough for that. So, a fuel tank for the bottom stage. Also, looking at this drop tank. So we have got a contract to test it. We can't really use it yet. That holds a lot of fuel if you scale it up. So I go for the smallest one available. Just scale it up one. Which is good. So then I'm thinking power. And they're too small there, but we can put them above the adapter to fit nicely. Like that. There's no science on this mission, so we don't need too much power. And then I think for close quarters maneuvering, we're going to need some RCS. So I'll scale that tank up too. That's the tweak scale mod that allows you to do that. The only RCS ports we have are those, unfortunately, at the moment. So six of them should just about do it. And then a tariff engine. I do play with the idea of scaling it up, but it's just huge. There's no need for it. And then I'm going to need a fairing. That just closely fits over the outside. Nice. And then of course life support from TAC life support as well. So a small life support container, small waste container because they last ages. So we only need the small ones. So all looks okay at the moment. Now to build the main body of the rocket. So we used a quad, a quad a coupler. So we've got enough of it. There's a lot of weight in that top section. I'm thinking I should just about do it. So four of the Reliant engines. That's close enough. So we're going to need a lot of boosters to get us up off the ground. So we go for eight couplings. Thank you. 
Don't need any science for this one. Trust the SRB. I mean, these are our go to boosters whilst we're still at this stage of engine, which hopefully isn't for too much longer. Some aerodynamics. Realising I need a reaction wheel, which means I need to rebuild the fairing top. This is fine. And then I realise I need parachutes because I am re-entering this one, so I'm going to it's eight on the bottom there. Four above it, so that's twelve parachutes should be more than enough. And six solar panels. Communications are always good, so we have the standard Communitron, extended Communitron, and then we have Metjeb as well, for what little worth it has, but it does come in handy later on with the manoeuvre in this. So that's all good, I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So structural added some supports for launch. Just four is enough. Just double checking the contracts. Decide to give a different fairing a go. Oh, yeah, this is where I realise we are actually re entering, so we're going to need to separate off the engine and have a heat shield. Only probably we only have the 1.25 meter heat shield at the moment. So as got rid of the fairing, we're looking at weight now. So we're hoping that heat shield will be able to take it. Then we need a coupling. And then the engine could go back on. And that's all fine. But I do decide to just look at the staging here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of considering going for a different fairing just because this one only kind of just fits newborns definitely will fit up. That looks a lot better. Anybody spot the dirt before I launch? So I will end up having to revert this flight. Satellite scanning away. Starting our gravity turn. I'm looking forward to having a sync guidance. Get really bored really quick of trying to get these rockets into orbit.
already gone too far, so I kill the engines to try and circularize. the orbit. When that was the point I realised I was missing something fairly essential. And that would be replacing the parachutes. So I go for eight down the sides and the big one on the top. Place that. And I've just sat there having a think, as I do when playing this game. So that all looks good, just got to readjust the staging and go for it for the second time. And again I realise I need something else, and that is the flight engineer, just so I can see my where my ship's at a lot easier on screen. Conical ferns are uh, a bit of a pain once you take them off. Sun scanty. I know we try. Third time lucky. So just trying to drag it over. Goes up boosters. Gravity turning over, but we're gonna have to kill engines soon. There we go, so that's the engines killed. So we can see the two pods in orbit around Kerbin that we're trying to rescue the people from, and we launched at pretty much the perfect time, we have right in the middle of them. Just checking out what Major has, but at this level it doesn't really have anything of any use apart from the uh, smart assist you can see in the bottom left. The automation comes a bit later. Finishing this burn. So detach. And then we have to struggle free of the ferry. Just a little boost and twist over and we're free. Ok, 
Okay, so I decide we're going to go for the one in front of us first and try and catch it up. So we set it as target. And the first thing to do is match its plane. Although, we don't really need to do it on this side, we need to do it on the other side. As that's the direction we're headed, there we go. I do catch on, eventually. It's like going back through all these things again, it's like learning it all over for a second time. We need to turn Mech Jeb off so Mech Jeb and Flight Computer aren't competing against each other. Solar panels deployed. So you can see we're pointing straight down perpendicular to our orbit because we're changing the plane of our orbit to match the target. We're not actually adjusting the orbit itself. You can see the actual target crosshair is on the horizon on the nav ball. It's only a very short burn. So now I'm looking at the periapsis and apoapsis for where we're at. I need to catch it up, so I need a smaller orbit than the target. But it still needs to cross over. If you know what I mean, the orbits need to cross at some point during the two orbits so that you can actually intercept it. But you can still overall make your orbit smaller, which means your orbit period is shorter and you'll catch the target in front of you. So we'll just make it a little burn to do that now. There we go. We're going to end up speeding this up to quadruple speed. it takes a while. Here we go. So you can only go uh, 50 times speed when you're this close to the planet with the normal time acceleration anyway. So I've got intersect 1 and intersect 2 highlighted. That's where the orbits cross each other. You can see that's coming down with the distance at the intersect points is coming down with each orbit. You can see that visually anyway. So this is where Smart Assist comes in handy. So you can see I've got it pointed at target and what I've got at the actual velocity pointed at is um, it's not target retrograde so I'm not pointing at the target in retrograde I'm pointing in a direction so where I'm actually firing my engines it's reducing the velocity relative to the target so it's target relative velocity retrograde so that decreases the speed at which we're catching or moving away from the target. Then I point directly at the target and prograde. So that gets me headed towards the target. And again point retrograde just to try and even it up. But if you've got the target retrograde to 
the velocity retrograde here to exactly 0.0, .0 meters per second, then you could just target prograde and head directly towards it. But it's pretty difficult to do that. Especially with these rubbishy RCS boosters. See the retrograde moves massively. But this will get us close enough because we don't need to dock with the ship, we just need to get reasonably close. You'll see why in a minute. So we'll retrograde in again. I went down to about 0 0.2 meters per second. Now I'm going to prograde back to it again. So we're up to nearly 8 meters per second there. I think I'm going to let it run. You see we're not, still not running perpendicular to it and as we let time go by it's moving around all over the place because it's in a slightly different orbit to us. So all these little adjustments slowly adjust our orbit to get to a point where we're close enough like this a few hundred meters. Then I switch to the pod EVA with the person we're rescuing and just use my jetpack to get over to the rescue ship. So I'm just floating through space <laughs> above the planet in orbit myself basically. It's still weird to me, this is a new mod to me, you see Valentine that dwarf star that orbits our star's solar system way way away in a distance with its own little network of planets over there as well. But anyway, getting close to the ship now. So like I said before we had those IFI life support capsules. Although they contain a lot of life support they also have room to put one Kerbal in. Can't do anything with the Kerbals once they're inside but it's housing whilst we haven't got the command pods and stuff to put other Kerbals in and they do come in handy. So that is one Kerbal rescued. Now to try and transfer over to the second one. Set it as target. Now we're going to start looking at how we can adjust our orbit to allow his capsule to catch us up which means we need a bigger orbit. But this is an easy place to make a mistake. I always get confused, like, especially when I've just done one where I'm trying to catch up a capsule. So I set the orbit smaller rather than bigger on this occasion, but I quickly correct it coming up. And then we just, it's just a waiting game for it to get close again. So it's me making all these fine adjustments and I'm going the wrong way. This is about the point I realise I'm going in the wrong direction. So 
So we're just going to finish that burn anyway. Now I'm making it a little bit bigger. So just accelerate to that node. Then add a secondary node. There's quite a big distance between us now. So even though this is sped up to quadruple speed, um, I do make a couple of adjustments in between, but I'm not going to uh, slow down for them because it's just a case of allowing the pod behind me to catch up now. Round and round we go. I could adjust it so the orbit's bigger and catch it quicker, but it's just going to be more adjustments later on to get into sync with it. So, kind of figured what's the point. Just wait it out. The timer won't start ticking down on his life support until we get a lot closer. So, yeah, see, so yeah, I'm making it a bit bigger just to catch it a little bit quicker again. Let's execute that node. And we'll go again. So we're getting a fair bit closer now. We're back to about halfway in between the pods.
Okay, getting close now. This is the final little burn just to get a bit closer, a bit quicker. Well, it's nearly there now. Once we have the upper level of well, the manoeuvre planner part of MechJap installed, we can just do what's called a Homans transfer to target. And as long as your closing distance on the pod, it'll work out when your burn's going to be and execute it all for you and get you to within less than a kilometre, which is really handy, especially for when you're trying to dock with a PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation. Space Station. By the time you get that close, your, t your relative velocity tends to be really low because you're at the same point in pretty much an exact same orbit. As long as you don't try and do transfer from too far away, then their orbits are crossing at a steeper angle. Therefore, your target velocity is much higher, a lot harder to control. You see the Kerbin network working? nicely to make sure we've always got signal back to the uh, command center. Okay, so we're getting pretty close now. Yep, here we go. So same routine, it's target velocity retrograde, bring our relative speed down. We weren't far from pointing at the target with that, so our actual interception point isn't too bad. So now prograde towards the target. You can see the target prograde is directly over where the target actually is. So we're pretty much spot on here. I'm just going to do a little bit of retrograde prograde just to make sure. Got it down to 0.2 meters per second. So I'm just going to pick up a bit of speed and then time accelerate towards it. See, we're not quite perfect. Yeah. So now we need to target velocity retrograde. Slow it down. Yep. And then target prograde. So we're heading directly towards it again. In the retrograde position and get ready to speed it up again. Get close. See, we're still not on a perfect direct path towards it. We'll get within a few hundred meters and then drop the target velocity speed to 0.1 meters a second and we can switch across the pro EBA and get out of our pod and head back to the rescue ship. Interesting view, looking directly at the planet. Take a cheeky EVA report on the way. Even though I've got barely any electrical charge left in this suit because it's the person being rescued.
Okay, closing it. The actual distance disappears when you get below 100 meters away from it. One thing you've got to be careful with whilst EVA in like this is not to break all the solar panels flying straight into them. There's hatches down here, but I don't think they're ones you could get into. Even though it says crew hatch, it just wasn't letting me. So I just decided to go around the other side. Pretty sure I need to get into the top one with this. Yep. And that is the two Kerbals rescued. So we're now going to put point orbital retrograde and get ourselves back down into the atmosphere. Then I kind of realise I want to land in the daytime, not at night, just so I can keep the charge in the battery because don't want to run out of charge in the battery on the way down once the solar panels do get destroyed and they were going through the atmosphere. Because um, if your batteries run out, you can't deploy your parachutes. And that's everybody dead. So there we go, a little bit of burn. Shut it down. This is just to make sure that I get deep enough into the atmosphere. I'll let it run down to about 65,000 meters and then finish off the fuel in that engine or as close as possible before I start to heat up in the atmosphere. So we're burning full blast in the engines, trying to reduce our orbital speed a bit. Starting to hit the outer edges of the thicker atmosphere now, and we're getting through the fuel. Through the fuel. See our two rescuees playing with bits of metal in the life support capsules. So there we go, so we're heating up, so I decided to get rid of the fuel and the engine, what was left. There wasn't much left before it blows up <laughs> with the heat, it would be good for our ship. Especially with it being basically connected to where the two rescuees are. So this was kind of a hoping point that that tiny heat shield would provide enough protection. But it turned out okay, and the solar panels are gone. Once we get down below a thousand meters per second, usually pretty good. So there you go, you can see the heat's dissipating, which means I've basically made it. So just wait for the rest of the surface speed to come off, and then I can deploy the parachutes. There we go. 
that's a surface app. That way your ship's always pointed upwards. Cheeky EVA report. That was risky because we were still going pretty fast. But it's a water landing, so whatever happens, as long as we're slow enough, even though we get flipped upside down. Doesn't really matter because we've got to splash down into the water. And there we go. So that is rescue mission, double rescue mission. All completed, brought back the two Kerbals and then two that we rescued join our astronaut program. Which is good because it costs a fortune to hire new people the normal way with money. So rescuing is definitely a way forward. We're just going to get rid of all the space junk. And we're finally going to get rid of, as well as the pods that we just rescued the two from, we're going to get rid of that first orbiter that we launched. It doesn't really serve any purpose. The blue line is just a contract, wants us to move one of our target satellites, but I'm not doing that with the Kerbin Network satellites. So that's it. Episode 9 over. Thank you very much for watching. Come back next time for more Kerbal Space Program and mistakes and learning on the way. <laughs>